Stability is terrible for sea keeping. So why do we use it? Better question. Why would I refuse a client who asked me to relate a stability analysis to seakeeping predictions? Well, this innocent little question encroached into the void between stability analysis and seakeeping, and that's an intentional void. Many people misunderstand the limits of these sciences. To understand the boundaries of these sciences, we first must unveil the motivation behind their development. Go back to the beginning. It began with a basic engineering question, how to guarantee ship safety on an uncertain ocean. And guarantee is the key word there. Well, stability and seakeeping developed as two different approaches to answer that question, and neither of them were completely successful. So to talk about this, we first need to talk a little about the science of ship motions. To really guarantee safety, Naval architects first needed methods to predict ship motions. Now this ventured into the field of dynamics, which is predicting the behavior of moving objects. Dynamics refined the subject of ship motions into two fields of study, two questions. Number one, the magnitude of motion, and number two, will things return to normal? Now the first branch became sea keeping analysis to predict the magnitude of the ship motions. And the second branch became stability analysis to address the question of returning to normal, that is, an upright ship. Seakeeping predicted typical magnitudes of response given a specified wave system. Ah, pay attention to that, that's going to come back to bite us. But this was only accurate for small ship motions. Um, the definition of what small motions are, that requires a more extensive and mathematical discussion of seakeeping which is beyond the limits of this video. Stability analysis, on the other hand, stepped in to predict responses to large single events. Stability analysis focused on safety in extreme events. This separation was important because these two strategies allowed efficient approaches to address the overarching questions of ship motions. Efficiency is important when we're doing engineering. Already, we begin to see that divergence of stability and seakeeping into two separate disciplines. Refinement of these two sciences uncovered further complications that led to even greater separation. Stability, as we said, it essentially asks if the ship gets hit by a wave, will it come back upright? The answer really depended on the magnitude of the wave and a host of other factors. Compound this with a range of ship loading conditions and drafts and trims and all these complexities, and predicting ship stability, it really started to look like the ship was an infinitely variable machine, and it was constantly changing the specific details. We had the math to analyze any one of those combinations, but how to come up with an, a single solution that could check every situation efficiently? Now at this point you might be thinking, stability doesn't sound like it's working. Let's take a look at the other end. Let's look at sea keeping. Well, sea keeping offered different challenges. The problem of sea keeping really centered on the weather. We can't guarantee it. And guarantees are important when you're protecting human lives. Ship science possessed the tools to predict a ship's response to any given wave. That was achievable. But no one could predict exactly which waves the ship would encounter on any given day. This was why any honest prediction of sea keeping included a probability level associated with each result. So you're starting to notice a trend here. Both sea keeping and stability suffered from the uncertainty of waves and weather. We had the science to predict each single scenario, but how to select the right scenario that would guarantee safety? There's that word again, guarantee. All the sea keeping models required us to select a probability level when predicting the weather. Well, which probability do you pick? Do you want a 10% chance that the ship will sink? 2%? How lucky do you feel? Well, that's just not going to work. We cannot approach the safety of the ship like a night of gambling at Vegas. Stability analysis held the potential for that certainty because it dealt with single large events and single scenarios. 
but it always depended on selecting the right test conditions for a given scenario. We needed a new way to measure stability, something that separated our analysis from the weather forecast. So let's turn to the answer of stability regulations. You see, naval architects quickly realized that stability was just too complicated to provide a universal guarantee of safety. The unsinkable ship, it does not exist. It will never exist. But how to address the question of ship safety? We still needed some sort of reliable indicator. Well, we started to develop a new strategy for ship stability. Instead of trying to guarantee absolute safety, we focused on a more achievable goal. Reasonable safety. Seaworthy. Modern stability is not trying to provide a guarantee. It instead provides the vessel master with guidelines on the vessel limits, instead of promising an unsinkable ship. And we then trust the master to operate the ship safely, aided by those guidelines. But the weather still remained a problem. A robust stability analysis required us to consider every single major weather condition. And this quickly multiplies into thousands of analysis cases. And that's far too onerous for a regular stability analysis. Instead, naval architects turned to statistics and statistical analysis of casualties. We reviewed the properties of dozens of vessel casualties. We focused on various stability criteria that could be easily measured. Easily measured is the key word here. And we compared the distribution of those criteria against those vessel, vessel casualties. Very quickly, we realized that the best tool to measure the vessel stability is the GZ curve, also called the writing arm curve or the stability curve. This became the primary tool of measurement. What it generally does is it measures the amount of writing moment generated by the hull as it heals over. Bottom x-axis is your heel angle and y-axis is your writing arm. Even better, the GZ curve factors out the ship displacement. Remember I said that it's a writing arm, not a writing moment? Size does not factor into the GZ curve, just the distribution of your hull's buoyancy. Well, compared on this basis, all vessels had the same general shape for their GZ curve. That's good. That gives us a basis to start comparing ships and casualties and try to form some sort of mathematical definition of what makes a ship safe. So here we have a bunch of naval architects sitting around at a table comparing GZ curves from lots of different vessel casualties. That's not actually what happened. The important part is that comparing all of those curves, trends began to emerge. Based upon these trends, regulatory groups developed a series of rules, regulations. Most of the rules were pretty similar. They're all based on the same sets of physics and the same principles, but they each have their own little tweak and their own little concerns. And that's because there's more than one rule. There's a whole book full of them. Each set is designed to address a single specific scenario or concern. Now the key word for these criteria and regulations is measurable. We're not trying to compare against weather. We're not trying to deal with the actual waves on the ocean. We have instead a specific set of rules written by a regulatory body. We're just trying to match the rules. Those rules are based upon vessel casualties and upon good operating practice, but they're not tied to any specific weather category. So what does this actually look like? Well, generally, each rule and regulation gives a set of equations that describe uh, some required characteristics for that GZ curve. And then we can measure the GZ curve and predict it at the design stage. But the stability regulations made those ships relatively similar in how they handle on the ocean. And that was what made them all consistent. Is we're no longer designing to ocean weather. We're no longer designing to individual people's preferences. We're designing to a common set of regulations that everyone has agreed to follow. And that is really good because it gives the vessel master the tools to make informed decisions about their own vessel safety and the confidence to know that those tools are based upon a consistent and rational science. Well, come on now. You didn't really think it was going to be perfect in all roses, right? Stability regulations provide us a tool, but not the absolute guarantee of safety. And that's why naval architects, we have to get very careful with our words when we're discussing stability, because we can't ever tell our clients that the ship is safe. 
we can't ever provide that guarantee. We can only promise that it meets regulations. Naval architects also need to avoid any comparisons between seakeeping and stability, because they're entirely separate disciplines now with their own methodology and separate goals. Seakeeping still accounts for the weather. Stability is completely divorced from the weather. Stability only deals with regulatory bodies. It's a legal affair. Seakeeping can deal with the weather, but it's really more from a lower risk scenario perspective. Seasick passengers are far less dangerous than a sinking ship. So we can tolerate some uncertainty in those predictions. But stability addresses safety and issues of survival. We intentionally keep these separated from each other because of the differences in the risk levels associated with the two analyses. Well, it's not a perfect system, but I think it gives us a lot of advantages. The stability rules give the master of the vessel the tools to decide their own fate. When a naval architect performs a stability analysis, they're creating operational limits to keep the ship within the expectations of a good seaworthy ship. But the naval architect, we can't quantify the limits of seaworthy. The master has to decide what those are, limits are based upon each specific situation. That is operational experience. I agree this is not a perfect system, but we have to remember the intentions and limitations of stability and seakeeping, and that will really help us stay satisfied with the results. Remember, seakeeping is about providing vessel motion predictions but for low risk scenarios, things where it's okay to be wrong every now and then or a little bit off. Stability, on the other hand, has completely divorced from the ocean weather. It's now about legal matters and safety. And again, we can't provide absolute guarantees of safety. Instead, stability arms the master with consistent guidance rather than unrealistic expectations. Thanks very much. I'm Nick, the Naval Architect. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click that like button and subscribe for more videos. And did you know that we produce more than just videos at DMS? Check out our website to find more articles, free downloads, and other help with ship design. We offer a host of engineering services for budgets large and small. So check us out to see if we can make your next project easier.